In this video, we're going to look at the academic tab in a little bit more detail, and in particular, the student view section of that academic tab. So we'll just open up our internet browser, and as you can see, we've already logged on to the portal, and we're presented with the home page. So we're going to go to the academic tab now, so if we just click the academic button. And if you've seen the previous video, you'll see again the modules that we're enrolled on are at the top left. So that's familiar to us. But we're going to go down and on the right hand side under student records is a clickable link to student view. There's also a link to finance. Uh, we won't cover this in the video tutorials, but you can look at that yourself. So we'll just click the link to student view. Now, as a new student, you will be presented first with your online registration for this academic year. Now we can see that this student has completed all of their online registration, the four various steps, and this is identified by a green completed and tick sign. You have to complete online registration for every year of study that you're with us at the University of East Anglia. So at the end of your first year, and before you start your second, you will have to complete your online registration process again. And as the ODP course only runs for two years, you'll only have to do this one more time. That's so we can keep up to date with your records as various things like your accommodation details may change. So once this is completed, we will now go to the student section. On the top left, there's a link to student. And we'll click this now. And this is your student page. And it's got some useful information here that you'll be accessing quite a bit. First bit at the top here, and we haven't been assigned this yet because this student hasn't started a course, but this is where the details of your personal advisor will be. Your personal advisor is a member of the university lecturing staff who is, as well as their normal role as a lecturer, there to specifically advise you, the student, on any of the assessment things that you might need, any help with essays and another other assessments. They're also there to help you with any other information or guidance or help that you might need. And although they might not be able to answer all the questions that you have, they can certainly guide you in the right direction. And the UEA has got a lot of support services available for students to use. Another thing that you'll be accessing quite quickly is uh, your timetables. And we can access these in a number of ways. Uh, we can look at it through a, time, a table view, and we can also look at it through a list view. So we'll just take one for example in this video, and we'll look at it through the table view. So we'll click on the link now, and the table view brings you by default to the week that you're in. Um, and as we can see in this week, we don't have any scheduled lessons. And that's because this course doesn't start until the following week, until next week. You can see here we've got some variable options we can go and uh, customise the, the table how we'd like to. We can choose which month we go across, we can choose whether the days go across the top or down the side, and we can choose whether it's a day, month, week or a task list. It defaults to week list. We can also here see on the left hand side there's a mini calendar view. So as we haven't got any lessons scheduled for this week, what I want to do is to move on to next week. So at the minute we're in week six here on the left hand side. So if I click on week seven, it will bring the whole week up. And we can see here now, we've got some lessons scheduled for next week. And it looks like there's quite a bit of information here to start with, but if we just take one lesson, we'll take the first lesson of, lesson of the course, we'll break it down into a little bit more detail and explain what's really going on. So the top here there's a there's a code which doesn't really make a lot of sense but this is actually the code of the first module of your course. Uh, next to this is the type of lesson that is being held and this is also represented by the colour of the box. It's not really important what kind of lesson it is. Under this we've got the duration of the lesson, so we can see it runs from 10am to 12pm. And under that we've got group 1, and again this isn't really applicable to ODPs because you've only got one group 
but for some of the bigger cohorts like the adult nursing branches they're quite often split up to, into different groups into more manageable groups for classrooms under that we can see uh, who the lecturer is so in this instance it's David Huggins the ODP course director and under this this is the probably the most important part is the actual room that the the lesson or the lecture is being held in and again if we break this down into a little bit more detail we've got the first bit we've got a a building code which in this instance is ECB and that stands for the Edith Cavell building and of course you might have some lectures where you're in different parts of the university so if we go over to this lesson for example the building code has now changed to med which is the medicine building go back to this first lesson because we were going through the content on this we've now we're now presented with a some numbers we've got 01.12a the first part of it the 01 part uh, that's the designation for what floor you're on. So zero is always ground floor. Um, so 01 in this respect is the floor below ground floor, the basement, if you will. The point then splits up the floor level from the actual room level. So we can see that we're in the basement level and we're in room 12A. So again, if we go over to the, the med room, we can see in this building the lecture has been held in two so that's the second floor above ground level and in room 02 so it does take a little while to kind of get your bearings but it's quite easy to work out once you know how under that we've got the the title of the session being held and the title of the session and also the lecture can sometimes change at the last minute we often get in external speakers who work in the, the practice environment, in hospitals, so on and so forth. And understandably, they can sometimes uh, be required to work in their environment at the last minute, so lectures are always subject to change. So the important thing you need to take from this is your room number, because that's the one thing that very rarely changes. So you can see we've got lots of different sessions throughout. There will be occasions where we do do co-taught lessons and Friday is a good example. You can see with the rooms we've got ECB 0119A, we've also got ECB 0.19, 0.19B. And this is because this session is actually being held in two classrooms simultaneously. These are two classrooms that are next to each other and there's a partition between the two um, so we can divide it and actually have one bigger classroom. And this is a session which we will actually be teaching with the first years and second years simultaneously. So I've switched profiles now to my profile um, and I'm on my student view to give you some idea of what your student view will look like once you start the course. You can see immediately that this top box where the personal advisor you haven't been assigned yet, I've got a personal advisor now which is Judy Parker, who's another one of the ODP lecturers. And you can see on the right here there's a couple of extra boxes which you don't currently have. One is about um, the different module details that your modules that you're enrolled on. And one's about assessment um, information. We've got a, a link here to a PDF which tells you how to uh, submit your assessment work. We've got another link which tells you any work that you have submitted. So if we'll just click on this quickly. I just want to show you this very quickly. You put all the stuff at the top here that you've submitted. So you can see I've done the PACS module, which is divided into different parts of assessment. And I've also done a dissertation, which I've submitted as well. And it gives you the dates when you've submitted. Um, if you haven't submitted it, what you'll have here is an option to print the cover sheet. So whenever you submit anything, whether it's an essay or a portfolio or any other type of assessment, you will have to print off a cover sheet to go with that assessment. That's, so that's where we print it off. So if we just go back, uh, there's also a section for provisional marks. 
Um, so you can see I've submitted my dissertation, but my provisional marks are not yet available. They'll be available at the end of the month. And once your provisional marks go to final mark statement, you can then check them on this online mark statement. So we can choose whatever academic year you've been enrolled in. Go to that academic year and see your final marks here. So we can see for my PAX module, I've got my mark results, but I haven't yet for my dissertation. Okay, we'll go back to student. That's a very quick overview of what the student section within the academic tab looks like.